Today we're going to talk about how to use bar charts to visualize categorical data. In particular, we're going to talk about how to use bar charts to visualize more than one categorical variable at a time. So it's, this is a super interesting little skill to have. You're going to use it a lot. Doing it is super duper easy and there's multiple ways we can do it. We're going to explore all of them today. All right. First of all, we're working in R, okay, presumably if you're watching this video, I hope you know that. And in particular, we're going to be using ggplot. Now, ggplot, or sometimes referred to as ggplot2, ggplot is, in my opinion, by far the best way to visualize your data. It's an amazing way. It's a whole new way of thinking in terms of visualization. You're going to love it. It's not difficult. You're just going to get your head into the right space. Stick with me. I'm going to take you there. You're going to love this, I promise you. Right, let's get stuck right in. If you want to learn about R programming, then you have come to the right place. On this YouTube channel, we're creating R programming videos on everything. So first of all, right at the top here, you can see I've got uh, install packages, Tidyverse. If you haven't done that before, you need to do it. When you say install packages, Tidyverse, it puts onto your computer a whole range of packages that we use. And these are the most popular packages to use in terms of data ma manipulation and visualization. And it includes dplyr, which gives us the, the pipe operators, which we're going to talk about in just a second. And of course, it also includes ggplot. You only do that once. Install packages, Tidyverse, you do once. I've put a little hashtag in front of it saying, which basically tells R, don't run that code. This is already done. Once you've installed it, every time you work with the Tidyverse or the packages there within, at the beginning of your code, you've got to say library or require Tidyverse. That's just saying, look, in this particular source code, we're going to be using these packages and then R knows what to do thereafter. That build, it, it expands the vocabulary that you've got within R to be doing things with your data. Next, of course, here we've got data open and close brackets. I just want to show you this because if I push command enter and run that piece of code, these are the data sets that are built into R that you can use to practice your coding. And I'm going to be using a built-in data set today, which means that you've got access to this data and you can do exactly what I'm doing at home on your computer and practice and in actual fact make improvements on the visualization that I do. All right, so that's the best way to learn R is to practice. And here we'll be looking at a data set down here called Star Wars. In fact, Star Wars, a lot of these data sets are naturally or built into base R. So when you've installed R in R Studio, you've got them. Star Wars isn't in there, but once you've installed the Tidyverse, and you've called the Tidyverse, then of course it is there, right? So we're gonna be talking about the Star Wars data set. And if we go over here, if we go here and I push question mark Star Wars, come on, enter. Oh, it's down here. That's This is telling us all about the Star Wars data set, all the variables, what they mean, et cetera, et cetera. That's a nice little trick. And of course, if I push view with a capital V, Star Wars, we're gonna see the data set itself, right? And we've said we wanna visualize two categorical variables, right? Categorical variables are basically, as opposed to numeric variables, numeric variables on a number line, one, two, three, four, five, categorical variables are like hair color, blonde, brown hair, white hair. These are all the characters from the Star Wars universe. So we've got Luke Skywalker at the top, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and then of course sex, we've got males, females, and hermaphrodite in this case, and they've got gender as well over there, but we're just gonna work with sex, and we're gonna look, work with hair color today, two categorical variables. How do we visualize them both at the same time using bar charts? Let's have a look at some code. Now, we're gonna be talking about ggplot, and of course, ordinarily, when you work with ggplot, what you would usually say is we just start off with ggplot, and you open brackets, and the first argument is always data, and you could say data is equal to Star Wars. Okay, and then you could carry on, and et cetera, et cetera. I don't like to work like that. I always say, Rather, because we're working in the tidyverse, we've got access to the pipe operators, rather start off with your data set, Star Wars, and then use the little pipe operator here. This basically, use the little pipe operator over there, and that is going to tell R to take whatever's on the left-hand side of the pipe operator and pipe it into the right-hand side and use whatever was on the left get, becomes the first argument in the new command on the right. Why that is useful, let me show you why that's useful. And you can think of the pipe operator is basically saying, and then, right? So we say Star Wars and then filter, right? So this is filter and it knows that we're filtering the Star Wars data set, right? Because as I've just described, that's how these pipe operators work. Filter. And there are more elegant ways of doing this filtering, and I'm going to show you how to do that in just a minute. Rows of this data where hair color, the variable hair color, is equal to black, or, you see this little vertical line here, that means or, or hair color is equal to or brown. Now, we use two uh, equal signs there, not one, because if it was one equal to sign, you would be saying hair color is equal to 
black or and is equal to brown. And we're actually asking a question. If hair color is equal to black, then use that row. Or if hair color is equal to brown, then use that row. Does that make sense? So two equals two signs together is really kind of asking a question. Is, is a particular row of data, does a particular row of data meet this criteria? If it is, then let's include it in the data set that we're going to use. Or, and I use or instead of and, because if we used and here, we would be saying to R that both criteria have to apply for that particular row of data to be extracted, to be used, to be part of the data set that we're using. And that's not going to work. If, if that was an and and not an or, we'd be saying we're only wanting Star Wars characters where their hair is black and brown. And that's not the case. We're wanting Star Wars characters where their hair is black or brown. If either criteria is met, that row of data is kept. That's how the filter works. Right, so we've got Star Wars. We're filtering it by these two criteria. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to drop any... Uh, missing data from the sex category. There's not going to be missing data in the hair color category now because we've already filtered it by the fact that they need to have black or brown hair to be included. So there's no missing data. Every, everybody's going to have a hair color. But in the sex category, there might be rows of data or observations where the sex hasn't been included and it's just blank or it's described as missing or NA. And in that case, we want those rows of data to be dropped. So we said drop NA for the variable sex and then we're piping it into ggplot. So can you see, the reason I like to do it this way is because we want to manipulate the data a little bit. We want to kind of tell our which components of this data we want to use. We want to filter out the rows that, we want, that we're interested in. We want to drop the missing data. There's things we want to do. We want to wrangle with this data before we start visualizing it. Now, what a lot of people do in our programming is they create a new object. Right, so the, and that's, there's nothing wrong with that. I just find it a little bit clumsy. So, and I'll show you what that means. You could say, I'm going to create a data set called my data, and that's equal to Star Wars, blah, 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 all of this, and then stop there. And then if we push enter, we've, we now have created an object called my data. Then, then in, in ggplot, we could say ggplot data is equal to my data, comma, and carry on. I find that a little bit clumsy, and if you're doing quite a lot of coding, you actually can land up with a substantial number of objects, and it all gets a bit confusing. I prefer to just start with the data that you're using and then pipe it into ggplot. We don't need to tell ggplot what data we're using. Why? Because it's been piped in. In which case, the first thing we want to tell ggplot is the aesthetics, right? This is where we tell... We tell R the different variables that we've got, how are they going to map out on our canvas with respect to our x-axis, our y-axis, colors, fills, shapes. There's all sorts of things we can do with respect to aesthetics. Notice at this point in time, we're not even telling R what kind of graphic we're going to create. We're not saying it's going to be a line graph or a pie chart or a bar plot. We're just saying variables that we've got. This is how we want them to map out against different aesthetics. Right. The first aesthetic is always the x axis right so you could say x is equal to hair color right we want the x-axis to be hair color you don't need to right because it, it assumes that the first argument in aesthetics is hair color next i'm going to say fill is equal to sex again we're just telling r that it's going to fill things up in terms of the color that it uses to fill things up it's going to fill them up differently depending on the value that's in the the sex variable right now we've done that, we put a plus sign. So we stop using the pipe operator because now we're working within ggplot and we say we want to add to this some of our geom. So geom bar, now we're saying this is the kind of graphic that we want to put onto the canvas and you can put different graphics on top of one another. And we've got position dodge. And I'm going to show you what I mean by dodge there. There's different things we can stick in there. Alpha equals 0 0.5. That just means how transparent the color is. If you leave that at 1, I find it a bit bright in this particular case. Theme is black and white. And actually what I'm going to do just now is I'm going to, I'm going to create this graphic and take away some of these things just so that you can see why I've got them in there. I like to remove some of the grid lines. So I've got element equals, equals element blank for these guys. And then title you put a title at the top, you can put a label for the uh, X and the Y axis. Okay, I'm going to come back and talk about all of these little bits and pieces in a little bit more detail in a few seconds. But let's run that. Let's run that code and see what we get. Here we've got our little graphic action. It might be easier to look at. So here we've got hair color. 
is our basically our x-axis, right? And we've got black and brown down here. These are bar charts, so they're a count. There's three females with black hair, and there are nine males with black hair, and there are six females with brown hair, and there are a number on the x and the y-axis here, but I think that's probably about 10 males with black hair. So that's kind of like an, a reasonably good representation of what's happening in our data. But I think there's other ways of doing this, and I want to walk you through that in just a second. So we've got position equals dodge, right, over here. That, that was part of the code. And that put the bars next to each other. If we didn't put position equals dodge, and we put position equals fill instead, right? Let's run that. Okay, can you see how now it basically, it looks at what proportion of people with brown, black hair are males or females, right? So it's basically both bars are going all the way to the top or up to 100%. And, and we could actually, we're not going to do it in this video, but we could put labels into these as to what percentage of have black hair or brown hair. And then if, if we didn't put anything there, if this was left blank, if we just left this out completely, would just be to stick one on top of the other, um, not next to each other like we did with a dodge and not all adding up to 100% like it did with a fill. Okay, so those are the three ways that you can produce a bar chart using two categorical variables. Now, I actually think there's a nicer way you can do this, and that's using the facet, facet wrap uh, feature in ggplot. So let's get into that a little bit. But before we do, actually, why don't I just talk you through a couple of these other little features that I've got in here. And I'm going to make that a bit smaller so we can, I'm actually going to make the code a bit smaller too, so we can see what's happening in our graphic as I make a couple of changes. Like, so first of all, if I didn't put in the alpha equals 0 0.5 and I put it as alpha equals one, which is the default, by the way, can you see how the, I find that a little bit bright? I find, like, I, find, I think it looks a little bit nicer at the 0 0.5. You can in R, and we're not gonna get, it in, get into it in this particular video, but you can actually specify the colors specifically. I'm using the default color that just pops in there, but and in, in other videos, I've talked about how to actually put in the exact color that you want for each of the variables. The next thing I've got is theme black and white. Now, let's say, for example, we didn't include that. If we stopped this code right there, so I take away the plus sign, and the, the code's gonna run up until that point and nothing more, you'll notice that we now have the default kind of gray in the background. Uh, because we've got alpha equals 0 0.5, so that our graphics are slightly transparent, we can see the grid lines, we can see the gray in the background. I don't really like that. We've lost our labels. It's not very nice. Let's go back, put the plus sign in. The theme equals black and white. Basically, that takes away that gray background and makes it nice and clean and white. If we didn't have this, if we didn't have these uh, panel grid major and panel grid minor equals element blank, if we didn't have those, so I'm going to put in a little hashtag, which basically will tell R not to run those lines of code. Then we're left with the lines, but be, and I don't mind the lines so much, except that you can see them when you're using alpha equals 0, 0.5, right? So I kind of think, well, let's let's not see them and put and let's just remove those grid lines and we're back to our and then of course we've got labs and then with labs we can say title put in the, the title x equals puts in the x the label for the x-axis and y equals numbers the label for the y-axis right let's look at a slightly different way of doing the same thing okay if i run this next set of code i'm going to run the code first and then we're, we're going to talk about it let me run it and you'll see what pops up. Now, can you see here, this is kind of more or less the same thing, but it looks a little bit neater. We've got black hair sitting in a nice box on its own and brown hair sitting in a nice box on its own. And we've got fe females and males as columns next to one another. And I think this is a little bit neater. I think it's a little bit nicer. How did we get to this? Well, let's have a quick look. Here again, we're back to Star Wars. And actually, let me go into this code because we want to talk about each element one at a time. Again, we're starting with Star Wars. We're piping it into a filter. Look at this. Remember up here, to do this filter, I said hair color is equal to black, hair color is equal to brown, and I used the or there. And I said there's a slightly more elegant way of doing this. This is much nicer. Look at this. And this is especially useful if you've got lots and lots of categories that you want to include. Hair color is in, okay, percentage in percentage. That just basically says, look, 
take what's ever in this next string of this theme means a concatenation, so the sort of next collection of categories, and look for where they apply inside hair color. So we could add more to this. We could say black, brown, blonde, and just keep going. And it's a much more elegant way than creating a new line of code for each color. Right, so hair color in, so that's our filter. Then again, drop any missing values, drop NA. The NA means not available or missing. So drop NA from the variable sex. And then we're going straight into ggplot. Now we're just saying, let's make the X axis. So this is the same as saying X equals sex, right? We don't have to say the X because it's assumed as the default, but let's put it in there. The X axis is sex. So it's gonna divide the X into males and females. And we're going straight into our geom bar. And I'm saying also, Fill the columns, make the colors that you use also equal to sex. And again, I've said alpha equals naught. So where's the hair color in all of this? Well, this is where the facet wrap comes in. We can say facet wrap, create two facets. Do this entire exercise twice, but in each of the facets, do it only by hair color. And in the case of hair color, we're only gonna be doing it by black and brown. So facet wrap, hair color, uh, and then all of this is exactly the same theme black and white, we've got our panel grids. I've said legend position equals none because I don't want there to be a legend on the side and then title X and Y, right? And then we run that and it turns into this. I'm not gonna get into too much detail. I want you just to feel comfortable with the basics here, to feel comfortable with the idea of creating graphics using ggplot. I want you to practice using the Star Wars. The Star Wars data set, by the way, is amazing. It's lovely. There's lots of different kinds of variables. So it's a great data set to use to practice your visualization. And of course, you can go through my video and just replicate the code exactly and see if you can produce the exact same visualization. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it useful. Please make comments, send me your thoughts, questions, etc., etc. Have a great day. Don't do drugs. Always do your best. Don't ever change. Take care. Speak to you soon. Bye.